to Blues America, baby. And your first major release happens to be on one of the biggest blues labels, Alligator Records. It's called Don't Call No Ambulance. Tell me about it. Yeah, uh, it was actually uh, 18 months in the making for that one. I, in 2012, when I first met Bruce Lauer, I told him that I'd just finished recording a record and I'd love for him to hear the recordings if he was interested. And he was surprisingly open. And I really just wanted a, a critique on it. And, uh, you know, he gave me his honest opinion, which he does. He's brutally honest and, uh, you know, which is something that I actually really like about him. And uh, he told me that he felt like I had half an album and that it was a very safe uh, blues album, but uh, he thought, you know, I could be a little bit more creative and, and he wanted to hear what else I had. And I spent the next year kind of writing songs and shopping songs in between touring. And uh, we ended up, you know, kind of settling on 12 tracks and he decided to, to get us back at the studio uh, to record and, and have it released on Alligator. So. No call, no ambulance. It was actually about 18 months in the making to finally get it out. But it, we've been really happy with how it's been received. We ended up getting the Blues Music Award for Best New Artist Debut for it. Uh, we ended up getting the Living Blues Magazine Award for Best New Artist Recording. And then also uh, the Blues Blast Award for Sean Costello uh, Rising Star Award on for it this year. So uh, it's definitely been, a, been an amazing year for sure. So... Uh, you know, it's, I don't like to put anything behind me. I just like to keep things in front of me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first album, I was just trying to do the same thing, just write the best uh, best songs that we can, record them the best way we can. And I feel like if you do that, then, uh, you know, everything else should take care of itself. And this album also features some guest appearances. Among those are the great Joe Lewis Walker. Yeah, he actually played uh, Slide on We Return Red on that, that record. I was sitting down to go record and I said, you know what I want to do on this song is a crazy kind of Joe Lewis Walker, kind of wild, kind of slide on it. And I was thinking to myself because we had, uh, you know, kind of become friends. I'd done a few shows opening for him when he was down in Florida. And I... Uh, thought to myself, you know what, maybe I can get Joe Lewis Walker to do a Joe Lewis Walker style slide on it <laughs> and uh, called him up and um, he happened to be coming down on tour in the next few months and I was able to get him in the studio while he was down and uh, get him to, to be on the record so that was really cool. Now, so and just to recap, your neighbors with your mentor, the great Sonny Rhodes. In 2013, you won the IBC, and you recorded your first major release on Alligator Records. So obviously, I can't think of a better start for a career. It's almost like the stars aligned in your favor. Now, do you think that this is all hard work, uh, karma, timing, luck, or all of the above? Um. Well, it, I think it was all of the above. I, you know, I started with Sonny when I was 19 and before that I was playing clubs around Florida and uh, you know once I got back from playing on the road with him I was that much more motivated and enthusiastic and I was just kind of working harder and it was quite some time before anybody was really taking notice of anything so it's, it's been a long uh, kind of you know over 10 years of, of kind of working towards it but it seems like a lot of stuff had come to fruition in, in the past couple of years so it's been a, a really incredible uh, kind of feeling
listening to Blues America with special guests on the studio phone here at the Chico Chisholm Memorial Studio in Phoenix, Selwyn Birchwood. Now, Selwyn, we're talking about your first album, and you mentioned that the, the president of Alligator Records expressed interest in offering you a record deal. Did this surprise you? Uh, well, I, I was hopeful in the back of my head, but I'm also very kind of grounded, and, uh, you know, I'm, it trips me out just because a lot of my favorite blues uh, players were on the Alligator label, and to look at my record and see the same logo on the bottom of the record as, as those guys is just kind of a, a surreal thing for me, but I'm really blessed and uh, pleased to be working with a, a team like that at, at, as good as they are. Lord, I feel so fine, baby. Lost my worries and why. Down to the crossroads. You ready? You ready? You ready? Now, it's not every day that I interview a blues artist with a master's degree. You graduated from the University of Tampa with an MBA. So... With so many potential choices in life, um, why be a blues artist? Because it's what I love. It's uh, you know, it's what I want to do. If uh, you know, they always tell you when when you're in high school and these type of things, trying to figure out what to do with your life. You say, if you're on a desert island, you know, what would you do? And and this is exactly what I'd be doing. And, uh, you know, traveling and and playing my music for. Uh, people and performing live and uh you know that's exactly what i want to do you could get a job anywhere and it'll be just that it'll be a job uh, but you know I'm, i've got a job now it's a lot of work uh, and i tell people you know I, I i work a lot but it doesn't really feel as much like a job uh in the same sense it's, it's a ton of work but i don't feel like it's a job do you think that your formal education translates over the business aspect of being a professional blues artist? Uh, I think it does kind of uh, unknowingly, uh, just because the way that I conduct business, I, I kind of know what to do and what not to do, but I don't really, you know, it's not like I have to show a resume to anybody to, uh, you know, get anything done, but it kind of indirectly it does for sure. What about your parents? Do they support your decision to uh, pursue a career as a blues artist? Uh, they're excited. They know that it's what I, what I want to do, and uh, they're, they're excited that I'm able to do what I you know, kind of dreamed of right now. Just kind of trying to keep the, the ball rolling and, and ride the wave as long as I can. So when you're sporting the, uh, the tall afro and you like to run around on stage barefooted, is this defining your style and your brand, or are you still trying to figure all this out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I just kind of don't like shoes, and I'm more comfortable that way. People ask me that a lot, uh, but it's it's just a kind of a comfort thing. Whenever I'm at home, I'm either not wearing shoes or I'm wearing sandals, and uh, I just I don't know. I'm just more comfortable that way. I guess to get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, I don't know, how many shows are you doing now? Uh, I think right now we're doing about 200, maybe a, a little more. Uh, but yeah, we've been, been working like crazy since May of this year. We've actually played in 11 different countries and uh, just have been touring nonstop trying to, uh, to get things going and keep it rolling. Uh, yeah, well, that's part of the excitement, being able to go immerse yourself in different cultures and, and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a really cool thing to be able to experience places that are so different from where you are at home and then also see 
how similar places are as well, because you wouldn't think, uh, you know, some places are the way they are until you get there. After it was done and when it was through, I made my way right back out of the woods. I never forget that old rusty tune that kept me out of that there hoodoo stew. <laughs> This week's special guest, the star of the show, Selwyn Birchwood, when Blues America returns. But first, the Blues Break, big number one, with a new release from Francine Reed with Wild Hearted Woman from PRX, Public Radio Exchange. The Blues Break, Blues Break, big number one, number one. Left my man of mine week ago. I had to break away. I couldn't take it no more. Of him crying about the way I live my life so free. Now you tell me that you're twice the man you'll ever be. So you think you can ride? You better stay with my stride, or I'm gonna hurt your pride. No, you can't tame a wild-hearted woman Be careful what you wish for Cause it might come true You better know just what to do Love was like the dog that followed me back home I'm a wild 